We are here today for our Lunch and Learn for March, and today we are talking all about literacy, how you can increase it, and how you can really help hone your students' skills on reading. Um, reading affects so much of what they do at schools, um, so this is a really important topic. We are going to start today with Ms. King, who is one of our reading teachers here at UA. Good afternoon. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, working with children in kindergarten and first grade on their reading skills. And I want to talk a little bit first about their sight word knowledge. I know it gets a little bit boring to just sit and practice flashcards over and over. So there's a couple different games you can do that'll make it a little bit of fun. If you make a separate set of the flashcards so you have two, play a little memory game with them. They like to do that. You can also have a scavenger hunt where you hide the, the words around your room and then go on a search for them. And when they find the word, then of course they have to read it in order to keep it. Um, you can play Go Fish with the sight words. And also you can use Play-Doh um, to spell out the words or take out a little bucket of water and a paintbrush and paint the words on the sidewalk. Uh, just anything to make it more fun than just sitting and um, practicing flashcards time after time makes it more fun. So when you go to read a book with your child, um, it's best to first look at the cover, read the title to them, and predict what the story is going to be about. Just make some guesses. Um, if it's got a dog on the front who's walking in the park, is she going to be able to tell you? So the dog's going to be in the story and he's going to be outside. And just talk about it a little bit with them. Then do a picture walk. And a picture walk is when you look through the book, talk about what's happening in each of the pictures, um, what they think is going to happen maybe on the next page, just to kind of get them comfortable with the book before you actually start reading. They might decide then they even want to change the prediction that they're making. So when you, when you start to read, um, you can take turns on pages. You read a page and they read a page. This helps them with their fluency so that you're modeling for them. Um, you can show them this is an expression to use, to stop at your periods, take a little breath before you go on to the next sentence. Um, you can also talk about words that they might not know as you're reading, either that they can't figure out or if they don't know what it means. That's a good time to talk about that with them. And after every couple pages, stop and ask them a question about what just happened on that page or, or what's that character like? What's that character going to do next? Just to kind of get them involved with the reading, that always helps. Um, when they finish the book, then talk about if they liked it or not and what was their favorite part. Um, what would you have done differently at the end? How could that have changed? And if there was a problem in the story, just anything you can think of to talk about the, about what happened in the story helps. If you think of your five W's, who, what, where, when, why, those things always help to get you started with the questions. And I think that's about all I have. Okay. Is there questions or? No, nope, no questions. Okay. So, um, Ms. Redmond, if you want to join us next. Hi, I'm Ms. Redmond. And I am a Title I teacher for grades two through five. And I have with me Mr. Gabriel Kelly, who is a second grader, who's reading uh, about a level R at this time. And he's in second grade. So today we're just going to, um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what you can ask before you read, during you read, and after you read uh, with your child at home and then just talk about some of the words that you might hear, like fluency and what it means, um, how to talk about vocabulary, and then of course comprehension um, is the main thing that we want kids to be able to do, is understand what they read. So um, Gabriel picked a book today that he wants to read, and why did you pick that book? Because I love this book. You love this book? What do you love about it? How they put salt in his shoes to make him go grow taller. Oh, so you remember the story. Um, do you like to play sports? Mm, basketball. Yeah. So who is that on the cover? Uh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. So he picked the book Salt in His Shoes about Michael Jordan, and he said that he remembered it from kindergarten, so that's why he picked it today. Um, so, you know, like Barb said, when you um, start with a book, you just kind of talk about the title, the picture, um, you know, if they haven't read it, they can make a prediction of what it might be about. Um, and so I want you to tell me um, 
what do you think the problem will be? So they put the salt in the shoes, but why do they do that? Do you remember? So we can grow taller and that he can reach down and make it. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have him read a little bit to himself. While he's reading to himself, I'll go ahead and talk to you all about um, compre comprehension and fluency. All right, so you can start reading to yourself. So fluency is basically how fast or slow a child reads a book, and also it has to deal with expression. So. Um, when you're reading at home out loud to your children, make sure that you're using expression um, and then ask them to read with expression. Basically, um, reading like you're talking, you know, using expression and, and using a questioning voice. Um, why did they do that or something like that uh, in the story? Um, fluency, you can also help fluency by having the children not point as they read to see how how they do without pointing to the words. Um, in third through fifth grade, they pretty much um, have, have dropped that skill as, as uh, tracking. Um, uh, they become more fluent. So um, basically fluency is putting words into phrases to be more smooth. It's how, flu how fluently you read is how smooth and how fast you read. Um, vocabulary. Is important some things that you can ask are is there a word you don't understand do you know what you know a certain word means um, have you heard this word before so if he was reading and came across a word he didn't know um, he would probably ask me and, and we would talk about that word that he did not know um, comprehension is um, the umbrella that um, fluency background knowledge vocabulary reading and writing go under. So the main goal is comprehension, understanding what they read. Um, and there are t tons of questions that you can ask. There are three types of comprehension questions. Factual, which is basically like recall, like what questions. Um, those should be pretty easy for children to answer. Um, inferential thinking is using context clues. Um, so it won't actually say it, drawing conclusions, um, making inferences is all has to do with um, inferential thinking. Um, and then critical thinking, comprehension questions are developing an understanding um, of the text. So how, why, um, and making sure that the children can completely understand. Asking them to summarize or retell is a great way to um, help see if they understand. Um, what do you think will happen next? What do you think, the, why do you think the character did that? So those are some questions that can develop comprehension um, skills. So he's read a little bit, and so I'm gonna ask some questions to him now while he's reading. So during the reading process. So Gabe, what can you tell me about the story so far? Um, uh, his, bro his brothers uh -huh. and his whole team lost the game. What game? The basketball the game. basketball game. Okay, and so now what's going on? He apologized all the way home. Really? So why did he apologize? Because he lost the game. So he felt kind of bad? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever felt bad when you lost a game? Mm, yes. Yeah, but you get over it, right? Yes. And now what's happening? Uh. So he went into the kitchen where his mom was cooking dinner. Uh -huh. And he asked her, what can I uh, use to get taller? And then she thought for a moment. Uh -huh. And then as she got salt, she uh, said salt. She said salt. Yeah, that's kind of funny that salt would make him grow taller. Right? I wonder how that's gonna work. Okay, you keep reading. Good job, thank you very much. You're um, so he will continue to read and then towards the end of the book you can ask questions um, like what was your favorite part? Um, is there a character that you like in the story and why? Um, 
Is there anything that you can relate to that happens in your family? Basically, you want to make sure that they're making connections to the text. So, um, you know, he's played basketball before, so he can make a connection to that. Everybody knows who Michael Jordan is, hopefully, so we can make a connection to that. Um, you know, the, the number one thing that, it, that I feel is most important is choice. So in uh, my guided reading classes, um, children are able to pick a book that they're interested in. And if a child isn't interested in a book that you're making them read or having them read, then it's going to be less likely that they want to read it or comprehend it. Um, and so choice is the number one. In, uh, interest in the book is going to be your number one bet. So if you ever need help with picking a book for your child, not knowing what level they're on, you can always email me here um, at University Academy. It's just my last name and then the letter J, Redmond J at universityacademy.org. And I'd be happy to help you with getting your child's reading level and getting some books that they're interested in. Um, reading at night at home is so important um, to develop these skills that we're talking about. And I really encourage you to either listen to your child or ask them questions after they read independently so that we can um, carry on the, the skills that they learn at school at home. So what do you think? What do you think is um, happening now? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, his mom is going to put salt in his shoes when he's asleep. Yeah. Do you think that he's going to know that she did that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to find out. So anyway, at the end of the book, you know, like I said, it's a long book, so he'll finish that on his own. But I thank you very much, and I think we're good. We can finish up in my room. Okay? Thank, thank you. you. You did a great job up there. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. next, um, we will invite... Mike English um, up here from Turn the Page KC um, and if you could talk a little bit about what Turn the Page is, what your organization does, um, you can sit or stand whatever okay. you want to do. Um, just for those people that maybe don't know what it is, sure. um, tell us a little bit about it. Sure, yeah, so uh, Turn the Page KC, we are a, a nonprofit organization. We were started by the mayor uh, about five years ago uh, and our goal is to get more and more kids reading proficiently by the end of third grade. So as you probably just heard, um, learning to read by third grade is, is really important because then in fourth grade, kids are, uh, they really need to be able to read and comprehend what they're reading to understand math and social studies and science and really all subjects. And so we kind of zero in on, on kids when they're little. Um, and by little, I mean as early as birth. So we work with parents and families and try to provide um, lots of different books and other resources for families that uh, can help them you know, start teaching their kids to, to read at a very early age. So that's what we do at, at Turn the Page KC. Um, our work takes a lot of different forms, but in general, we, in general, we're just trying to make the community more aware of how important reading is and then um, provide any supports that schools or other organizations need to, to help get kids up to grade level. Great. And you are going to share some strategies yes. with us today? Yes. Great. So. Um, our website is turnthepagekc.org, and on our website we have some tips there for parents of kids um, from birth through age eight. And these are tips for parents on things you can do at home and around the community to kind of support your kids' uh, learning, uh, reading journey. So um, I have some of those I'm gonna go over here specifically for kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. But if you're interested in, in seeing those, you go to turnthepagekc.org and then there's a little uh, tab at the top that says parent, and then you can drop down from there and go to whatever age uh, your child is and, and find some of these tips. Um, so I'll start with kindergarten. I have a kindergartner at home, so these are, these are things that I do. Um, as I was preparing, I realized I don't do them as often as I probably should, but I'm gonna, it's a good chance for me to remember to do these. Um, so when kids are in kindergarten, they're typically first in their, in their first school experience. You know, lots of kids go to pre-K or early childhood um, programs, but for many kids, kindergarten's first of the, their first sort of school experience. Um, but reading, specifically for reading, it's, it's a time when 
we focus on letters and words quite a bit. And so when you are at home with your kindergartner, some good things to do are to um, point out letters and words, kind of just generally quiz your kids about, do you know what letter that is? What sound does that make? Um, but then also to kind of teach them what nouns and verbs are. So for nouns, one thing that you can do uh, is to, uh, if you have magazines or newspapers around the house, um, cut out, kids love to cut when they're in kindergarten, cut things out so you can cut out uh, people, places, and things, which are nouns, of course, and sort of group them by, by people, group them by places, by things, kind of generally just, you're not really there to be their teacher, but more to kind of reinforce what they're learning at school. Um, another strategy is to find rhymes in the community. This is a, today's a good time to talk about rhymes because it's, it's Dr. Seuss's birthday and every Dr. Seuss book is just chock full of rhymes. Um, but you don't need to actually have a book to do rhymes. You can just point, point things out and come up with funny rhymes to go with them. They don't actually have to be words. They could just be um, pretend words that sound, that rhyme with whatever you're working on. Uh, so another strategy for kindergartners is to, um, is to practice letters. So pr actually practice writing letters. And this is what my, my son and, uh, will do quite a bit at, at the table is to practice writing his name first uh, and really working on writing it uh, with the letters facing the correct direction and um, the right size and so you'll see and it's I, my son has made a lot of progress here from from August until now you'll just see how much better the handwriting is and how much more accurate the letters are and so after they kind of conquer their name, they're, they're ready to write other words. And so you'll find that five-year-olds and six-year-olds will really kind of get into trying out writing new words. And then as they start to write words, they can string them into sentences, which becomes really exciting. The, the last thing I'll mention about uh, kindergartners is one thing that we've done recently is um, that's fun is to sit down and create a book. So you can take, um, you can take just pieces of paper, fold them, um, staple it in the middle so that it looks like a real book um, and then uh, sit down with your kindergartner and uh, let them draw the pictures and if they're not to the point where they can write words yet ask them what the story is what what story would they like to create around these stories and then you can write the, the word so we just did this my wife just did this with our son and his book had it was called Bob and each picture was a guy named Bob except he had a different expression. So it was like sad Bob, he had a uh, frowny face, happy Bob had a smiley face, girl Bob had long hair, so, and that was, I mean it was really a really riveting book, but, <laughs> but it was fun. And so then, as we did, so what we did for the cover was to use construction paper, so that's a little heavier, and then the pages inside are uh, uh, just white pieces of paper. So it actually kind of looks like a real book, which, um, you know, they feel is a, kind of a neat thing to do. So that's kindergartners. So for first graders, um, in, in first grade, the kids are starting to become uh, independent readers. And so when kids are in kindergarten, we always talk about um, reading to kids. But in kindergarten, we're starting to get to the point where we're either reading with them or allowing them to try to read to us. And so there are some things you can, you can do to kind of reinforce some of the skills they're learning at school. Um, one is, is to uh, what we call do an investigation and so if you go say to the grocery store come home with um, with say you come home with an orange sit down and kind of like do a mini investigation it's more like a research project but research project will turn off a seven-year-old pretty quickly but an investigation sounds kind of cool and so you can kind of document some things you learn about the orange um, and then work together on doing a little a little report and then um, kind of like the Bob book I mentioned before, put it into something that then maybe your, your first grader can share with others. Um, uh, so another, another thing that kids are starting to work with, uh, on is kind of figuring out letter patterns in words. And so one of the, the things you can do to support that, uh, that learning is to, um, is to take words they know and then either add or subtract letters and try to help them figure out what that word is. So, one example is the word um, uh, fin, like the, like on a shark fin or a dolphin fin. 
and what happens when you put an E on the end of it? So it turns into fine. And so once kids start to understand why that is, you know, that the E on the end changes the way that I sound, they're gonna start to see that pattern in other words. So just a, that's just a simple thing you can do at home. Um, and, then, and then another t tip is to work on uh, helping them understand sequencing when you read. So uh, it sounds kind of obvious, but you know, every story has kind of a sequence of things that happen. And so that's why it's so good to read to your kids because they over and over they hear stories and they start to understand the, what a story is like. Um, but you can, also, you can also do this by sort of narrating things around the house that you're doing. So um, talk about if you're, if you're doing the laundry, you know, first I'm going to take the clothes, dirty clothes, and put them in the washing machine. Second, I'm going to put in the detergent. Third, we'll turn it on. And so just that sort of sequence, first, second, third, and then conclusion. It's a simple thing to narrate around the house, but it actually helps to reinforce what, how, the, how they're learning to understand a story when they're in school. So those are, those are some tips for the first graders. Now we'll move on to the second graders. So when kids are in second grade, they are seven and eight years old. And so um, this is, from, from our research, we actually understand that this is actually one of the tougher um, years to teach kids reading. It's because um, they're going from that, that pace where they're learning what words are and what they, what they mean and what they sound like. They're going from that to putting them together into comprehending a story. So the growth in kids' reading skills is actually slowest in second grade. When you go from kindergarten to third grade, you see lots of growth in kindergarten especially, and in first grade. And then it sort of slows down in second grade and then picks up again in third. Um, so some of the things you can do with second graders are to really get them, again, interested in reading and interested in stories. So um, one fun thing to do is to tell your story to your son or daughter. So um, this is the age where we found with our kids too that this is they were actually interested in what you had to say about your own personal story. And so, again, working on maybe a book, you can actually sit down and uh, narrate your story, your personal story, where you grew up, where your parents were from, and work with your kids to kind of build and structure a story. Um, a very specific thing you can do in second grade is to actually start talking about adverbs. So they're getting to the point where they kind of know what, what nouns and verbs are and adjectives. But, but verbs, you know, words like quickly or slowly, these are, they're starting to learn what ad adverbs are in second grade. So as you're moving about town, if, you're, if you see a dog run across the road and it's running fast, you can say, look how quickly that dog is running and then mention, hey, that's an adverb, adverb quickly. Um, another totally different tip for the second graders is to uh, identify the lesson in stories you probably remember when you guys were kids too that every story when little kids read stories they always seem to have a lesson right and so um, you can ask them what the lesson is not just in books but uh, from tv shows maybe you're watching so if you're watching um say you're watching pbs kids or something and there's a um, super y or some other show is on you can ask they actually explicitly will do this on super y they'll ask what the moral of the story is but you can do that as well. Like, what do you think the lesson was uh, from that story? And then finally, um, another sort of real kind of technical thing you can do with second graders is to, is to start pulling words apart. And so, um, you know how you go from simple words to compound words? Uh, you can do that in reverse with kids. And sometimes that's easier to help them start to understand compound words. So, uh, for example, a word like um, preschool would be a good one. So pre and school, you push them together to form the word preschool, but you can pull them apart and you can ask what do you think pre, mean, pre means and what do you think school means. So those are some, some tips for second graders. And then finally moving on to the third graders. So this is a, that critical year where by the end of third grade, we want kids to be able to not only read words, use inflection when they're reading, but then understand what the, the words are and what the story is and remember what the story is. And so. Some of the uh, three kind of tips you can, uh, you can use in third grade are to um, kind of work on organizing information. And wh what that might look like is if, for example, you go to a, um, 
if you go to a museum or you go to, um, uh, uh, say, a children's museum, and there's lots of tons of information all around, you can take a, a note card or something and go around and sort of make make notes about what you're seeing, and then when you get when you get home, sort of when you're recapping your day, say to a brother or sister or to another parent, um, kind of use those notes and ask your child to kind of organize the information and then tell somebody else what they did that day. Um, and then similarly, summarizing, uh, being able to summarize events and experiences and, um, and then explain what the gist of it was. So I can, I can remember doing this in third grade where, especially on the standardized test, it seems like that's a lot of what you were doing was to read a, a passage and then answer questions about what the gist of it was. And so you can do, you can kind of help your child do this um, with, with books or with um, a, a story and ask them to be the one to actually summarize what it's about. Um, and then the last thing is just ask lots of questions of your kids. So in, in third grade, um, it, you know, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds are, depending on the kid, very, very chatty and like to tell you lots of stuff that they know. They, they, at least my, in my experience, they get to become um, kind of very confident, even cocky. <laughs> but, and, uh, and so they like to tell you stuff that they know, especially when they think that you don't know it. It's like the best thing ever when they tell you something and, and you don't know it. Um, so what you can do though is ask some follow-up questions like, like how, did you, how do you know this? Not necessarily where did you hear it, but how do you know? And then what do you think about it? And then really ask some follow-up questions to, to, get the con to keep them going. But also, I think a real smart thing to do is just make sure your, your kid feels um, empowered by that process and not like they're a nuisance. So it is very, very easy when a kid is just constantly telling you stuff and asking questions to try to shut them up because they're being annoying. <laughs> but a more productive thing would be to ask lots of follow-up questions to make them feel empowered and interesting and, uh, and to analyze what they've actually been telling you further. So those are some of the, of the tips for kindergarten, first and second and third graders. And for those of you who have babies and toddlers, we also have uh, lots of tips for how to talk, read, play, sing with, the, with little kids. Because when kids are, are babies, their brains are developing very, very quickly to the point where um, by the age of three, something like 90% of their brain is already developed. And so if you can, if you can really hammer them with, with words and experiences, books, songs, when they're very young, their brain is kind of, it really soaks all of that up so that when they get to kindergarten, they're in a position to, to learn. So um, at Turn the Pages websites, we have lots of good tips there, and we'll have also some more information about resources. And one thing that we do do is we provide lots of books. So um, we, pr we collect, purchase board books, baby books, and get them out into the community in as many ways as we can. And so we also have information there about how you can get access to some of these books too. So um, again, my name is Mike English with Turn the Page. Feel free to uh, email me at menglish at turnthepagekc.org. Or for those of you on the Facebook stream, just I guess can they, they could probably find I, me on Facebook. Yes, and I, um, I actually shared the website. Okay. So hopefully some will go to that. Um, I did have a question I wanted to yes. ask you though. How often should parents be reading with their children at home? Um, we say about 20 minutes a day. Um, and it, there, the actual number of minutes can obviously vary quite a bit, um, but if you can get into that routine of 20 minutes a day, that's really good, and I find that um, bedtime is, a, is just a great, if you, can, if you can make reading part of the bedtime process, that is a great way to make sure you're getting those 20 minutes in per day. Um, and then also your kids will get to the point if you're reading to them at bedtime, they'll demand it, which is great. Which is great, and also it really reinforces that daily routine of reading. Right, and then one other question: um, I have a four-year-old, and she likes to read the same books over and over and over again. Is she still learning when she's reading the same books? Like, what can I do to change it, or no, that's, you know, have her keep learning right. stuff from the same books? Right. Yeah. The, that. Like the. 
experts say that that's good. So there's nothing wrong with reading the same book over and over and over again. A um, couple of reasons. One, they like it, and so you want to make sure that they're enjoying the, what they're reading, so that's one thing. Second, um, it also helps them to understand the story structure, and so if they're hearing the same book, they're remembering that story structure, and so that really helps with their, their reading development. Um, and, but when, one thing you could, I mean, if you're getting super bored of that <laughs> book, <laughs> one thing you can do is to um, go to the library and figure out what other books are like it. And so if whatever it is about the, that book that they like, there's probably lots of others that they would like too. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. for coming today. Okay, um, next we have um, Julia from the Kansas City Library who is going to talk to us a little bit about the services that um, they provide for families. That was a perfect segue into library yes. services. <laughs> I said, my name is Julia Oglesby and I'm a Youth Services Manager at the Kansas City Public Library. I work at the Plaza Branch. We do have 10 branches in the Kansas City area. If you don't have a library card, you're really going to want to get one because now that we've learned all these great techniques for how to engage your child in reading, you need some books, don't you? So that's what we're here to talk about. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of great titles for kids. I just brought a few of my favorites. This is Rosie Revere Engineer, if you want to encourage your girls to become scientists. The Cookie Fiasco, what do we do when four friends have three cookies to share? We have a problem, don't we? And Chapter books for the kids get a little bit older. One of the things I like to point out is you see a lot more of them that have quite a few pictures in them now. These are especially useful when your kids are graduating from the picture books to the chapter books because it's not just this big block of text. That can look a little intimidating, so it's a good next step for them. And a lot of really great high interest nonfiction. This is one that just came out. It's called Little Leaders. It's a celebration of African American women in history. So just literally the tiniest ice cube of the iceberg here that we have available to you. So what we also have at the library is staff that can help you find these things. Every single branch has dedicated youth services staff that can help that know our collections and they know the literature. We read as many of them as we can. And one of our favorite questions of all is can you help me recommend, can you recommend something for my child? And we, that's our favorite question. We love to connect kids with the right books for them. And it's going to be different from person to person. So we want to know you and your child and what the goals are and what's going to be the book that connects with them. So do come ask us for help because we were, that's what we are there for. That is the reason we are employed by that library. So we're happy to help you. But you need one of these to get the job done. And this is your library card. If you are in the Kansas City metro area, even if it's not within the immediate area of the Kansas City Public Library, you can get a Kansas City Public Library card. I live in Johnson County and I have a library card for Kansas City Public Library. Um, they're good at all 10 locations, so you can move around from place to place, go to Waldo once, and then if you're out in Independence, you want to stop by the Trails West Library, that's great. So they are free to use. Any, anyone can get one as long as you've been born, you can have a library card. So um, we do encourage parents to get kids their own library cards. It's a great first step in responsibility and helps them feel like they're big and important and they get to choose their own their own materials and be important, you know, have that power over their own lives. So we have a lot of different things we can also help with in there. And then we have a lot of ebooks and I believe this should be on the website. You, um, yes, so okay. I shared a packet. This is a copy of the bookmark there, but we have something called Overdrive, and that is a wonderful service if you're technological in your family and you have a mobile device or a computer. You can download books on there that your kids can read right on the computer or tablet or phone or whatever. Also, audiobooks. It's a great service to use, and one of the best things about it is there's no overdue fines with it because the book will just remove itself from your file as soon as that loaning period is over. So. If you're like me and sometimes you don't get those books back on time, this is a great way to avoid those overdue fines that can drag you down. There's also audiobooks on there. We have another one called Hoopla that has graphic novels for kids on their collection. So it's another way of engaging your child in reading. And I know my son really wants that tablet, so a way of getting him to read is to put the books on the tablet so he feels like he's getting what he wants, but he's still reading then. So that's another service that we have there. I also wanted to show you Brain Fuse really quickly here. What you want to do is go to caselibrary.org and click on where it says Kids. Okay. And 
you scroll down the page just a little bit, there's this one that says homework help. And right on top is something called Brain Keys. And this is an online tutoring program for kids. So this is not just reading, but any other subject that your child may need help with at school. So this is available 24 hours a day, but only certain times have lab tutors. Julia, how did you get to the brain cues? I clicked on kids, and then what do you do next? Homework help. Homework help. Okay. Homework help. Click on access brain cues now. Now, you can do this from the library, and it'll go straight to it. If you're doing this from home, you will need to have that library card and PIN number with you to log in. I've already logged in here. The things I wanted to show you here are the live tutoring between 2 and 11 o'clock every day, except for major holidays. We have, there's a chat room that your children can go into and work with a tutor one-on-one. -on -one. So if they're struggling with something in school and need a little extra help, this is someone they can work with. They're all professional teachers, at least bachelor's degrees in their subject areas. So these are people who know what they're doing. They will not have information about your child other than a first name. So you don't have to worry about privacy. They just know that Katie here needs some help with her social studies program here. And they guide the kids through the problem. You can also create an account and save your sessions so that if your child's like, oh, I know, remember the tutor said something about this last time, they can access a log of what they had done before. So it's a great service. And like I said, available from two to 11, seven days a week, except for those major holidays. The other one I really like is the Skill Surfer, which is the second one, down, third one down here, excuse me. And this one is available 24 hours a day. These are just some online lesson plans and other things you can work on with your children that you can go to, say, in the third grader, since we're doing reading today. And it just gives some notes about different things you can do, and it takes kids through lessons. That'll be a lot like what they learned here at school. So again, just a reminder, and this one's available to them whenever you need it. And this is a free service provided by the Kansas City Public Library, so as long as you have that library card, it's never going to cost you anything to use this. We really encourage everyone to give it a try. So. But other stuff that we do at the library is we have lots and lots of fun programs at the Plaza Library, so I always like to have a chance to promote those. We are all about engaging the families and wanting them to come in and have a good good time learning something but having fun at the same time and then hopefully checking out some books and taking them home. So we have these calendars available at the Plaza Library but you can also get the information online. We'll have sometimes big stage shows like we have the Drum Safari coming a week from today and it's at 6 30 p.m. as part of the Friday Night Family Fun. This is a professional drummer who comes in with enough percussion instruments for everyone in the audience and you get to make your own show as you go. But then today we're doing a paper airplanes project, so if you want to test your skills, they would give a builder you are. We also have a STEAM program on Saturday afternoons. It's called KC Kids Create. If you're not familiar with STEAM, that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. So we're really trying to encourage those elementary age kids to study up more on that and learn about doing things. And then we also have some other special programs such as Coterie Theater. They, they get to do a story time with the uh, teaching artists from the Coterie Theater, acting it out, imagining, learning the basics of improv along the way. It gives kids a lot of confidence as they're going along. So a lot of really fun things to do at the library. We'd love to see you out there for these. And just a couple other fun things to mention. Who doesn't ever have a time that they just need a minute for the kids to do something. Try dial a story. Every week we put a new story over the phone. You just call this number. Your child can listen on the phone to a new story and it's a new one every single week. If you listen really carefully in the archives, you can hear me trying to read the Dr. Seuss books out loud since it is Read Across America Day. It's a challenge, let me tell you. Um, like I said, it's another service that we offer. We have thousands and thousands of kids who call in every week just to listen to the story. And it is never too early to talk about summer reading. I don't have anything to show you for that because we're still developing our materials for that. But starting May 25th, the Kansas City Public Library will start our summer reading program. It's really simple. We just want to keep kids reading throughout the summer. So if they read, we're going to give them prizes. And you can sign up at any of the Kansas City Public Library branches. We'll have additional programs available all summer long. 
There'll be a lot of information on the website once it gets a little bit closer, because like we're still developing the program right now, but I always like to put out that bug in people's ear a little bit early. So that is just a really quick summary of just some of the things we have available for you at the library. Is there any questions I, I can question answer? Here. I have parents ask me frequently, uh, so how do I go to the library and find like a level E book if my child's reading on a level E? Are they marked at all, or will the librarians know? We do not mark our collection with those reading levels, okay. um, but with the staff can definitely help you they with that. So just that ask us okay. at the desk, as said, that all the locations have dedicated you services staff that we can help you find things that match that for you. Um, can you also talk a little bit about programs you have for adults, if there are any adults oh, wanting to learn how to read? Um, adults learning how to read, you'll want to look at, Brain Fuse again does have some programs with that we don't have much for that right now, but we do have a number of programs available for adults. A lot of lectures, so if you just want to learn a little bit more, there's computer classes, there's job training classes, write your resumes, a lot of things. We also have a fairly growing program that's um, the tech coaches, so if you have a piece of technology you maybe need a little help working with, we have volunteers who can help you out with that. So there's a lot of services available there as well. <laughs> I'm just the expert in the children, so I talk more about that. <laughs> are there any other questions? I think a lot of parents are liking the Dial a Story program. Dial a Story is fabulous. I cannot yeah. recommend it enough. <laughs> Plus, the kids have so much fun listening on the yeah, phone that they're doing that. So. Okay. Great. Thank All right. you. For well, thank coming. you very much. Yeah. Okay. Well, that concludes our Lunch and Learn today. So, thank you for everybody coming and um, join us next month.